Hi everyone and welcome to this little workshop on mind mapping for inquiry-based learning. As I promised in my previous video, this is about how to use mind maps with children during inquiry-based projects. So let's have a look at mind maps as a tool and review uh, what it is used for. Mind mapping is a tool that can be used by early childhood teachers and primary school teachers and secondary school teachers and teachers who are teaching adults or for adult learning. But today I'm going to talk about mind maps in early childhood education and care context only. So here if you look at this mind map, which is a representation of the tool, they are used for brainstorming. For example, when you are planning for your learning and teaching, you are planning for teaching strategies, experiences. And if you want to learn more about how to use mind maps for brainstorming at planning uh, stage, you can watch my previous video. See the link in the description. It's also used for uh, structuring, sequencing, organizing um, so-called inquiry-based learning, which we're going to talk about today. It is widely used for documentation to display information as part of the inquiry-based project. It also helps uh, to make learning visible for families, for other educators, for any professionals and children themselves. So the ready-to-use mind map can be used as a review at the end of the project, as an assessment tool could be at the beginning of the project, in the middle and at the end. So that's an amazing tool that is very versatile. If you look at the left part of uh, this mind map, it introduces concepts. So mind maps are fantastic for introducing concepts and our new EYLF or Early Years Learning Framework talks a lot about how important it is not just to teach children skills, but also to introduce concepts. And concepts could be absolutely different and they usually are based on what children already know or their prior knowledge. So that's what mind maps are perfect for because they do help you to get a snapshot of what children already know about this particular topic or a concept. They do promote higher order thinking because as a teacher you are thinking with children together. So you are basically co-constructing knowledge. You are uh, playing a role of more knowledgeable other, which is the role that Vygotsky suggested as an important role for uh, early childhood education and care. And it is in line with social constructivism because children are sharing their ideas, their voices are heard, and obviously some children who are more advanced in understanding this concept can teach other children who are less advanced. I'll give you an example. One of my groups, there was a strong interest in dinosaurs, and you know that children do like dinosaurs at the preschool age. So this child that we had, he... Um, was really passionate about dinosaurs and he did know all their scientific names. So he went to the dinosaur museums or Melbourne Museum. He did uh, have quite a lot of books and he had a lot of prior knowledge uh, which uh, he would, would share with other children if he was asked. But to talk about dinosaurs uh, in context, uh, children need to have some prompts. Yes? So, and in our case, setups, play spaces, and mind map that we created together. So that was a really good example of how mind maps were used in the project. Mind maps are well known for quite some time. My son is 21 now, but I remember I started using mind maps when he was just two years old. So they are uh, very, very interesting tools and they are well known. And if you want to learn more, you need to research uh, Tony Buzan, who unfortunately passed away uh, in 2019. But he was one of the most important uh, foundational fathers of this concept of mind map. So as you can see here, there is a mind map that he created about himself and it does show us all his achievements and uh, what role did he play, play in popularizing the idea of uh, mental um, representation technique called mind mapping. So it's quite 
close to concept maps that sometimes uh, I use interchangeably, but I would suggest not to use concept maps with children unless you will use colors and pictures. While mind maps, they do in include color, as you can see, and they do encourage pictures. Uh, either you use pictures, uh, videos, photos, images, or draw uh, those pictures yourself or ask children to draw pictures. So this is very important part of uh, my um, today's workshop as well. Uh, children under five are much better learners when you present information through concrete learning uh, and information should be visual. So that's very important. So lots of pictures. And even if you write and model writing, you need to supplement it with kind of pictures or real life objects. Um, Inquiry-based learning also uh, used uh, mind maps or kind of mind maps. They called it webbing or webs. You, If you want to check out how to use webbing or webs, you can go to uh, our website of Lillian Katz or check the book uh, by Katz and Chart on inquiry-based learning. Uh, there are uh, two different uh, ed 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 editions, so you can, ch ch you can check out the uh, most recent one. And they do talk a lot about project-based approach and the role mind mapping plays in this approach. So now that you know that mind map is a kind of instructional tool or brainstorming tool, you can call it planning tool, that help, uh, helps teacher to organize information, to brainstorm information with children, to introduce concept, let's consider what is inquiry-based learning. According to Department of Education and Training, inquiry-based learning prioritizes problems that require critical and creative thinking so that children develop abilities to ask questions, design investigations, interpret evidence, form explanations and arguments, and communicate findings. Sounds a little bit too much for preschool children, you may say, but you will be surprised that Reggio Emilia approach in Italy and many, many other approaches now and centers around the world who are repeating some principles of project-based learning, inquiry-based learning, are doing it with children who are one, two, three, four, and five. So inquiry-based uh, learning prioritizes learners. So that's an active learning. And it's based on child's interest and questions and wonderings. So we have uh, uh, one of the versions of inquiry-based learning is project-based approach or project-based learning. This is a teaching strategy that's this focuses on real world problems, uh, challenges uh, using problem solving, decision making, investigating skills. So projects are quite popular among early childhood educators. And as a teacher, I use projects a lot in my approach to learning. Some examples of projects that we had over a few years would be snails. We were learning about snails food and nutrition, which food is healthy, which food is not healthy. Uh, we learned about restaurants and dining out. We learned about camping, dinosaurs, doctors, etc., etc. So projects can be quite interesting. I've seen projects on endangered animals, sustainable projects, projects that are researching first people in Australia and country and many, many other wonderful uh, questions. Yeah. Uh, so mind maps are good for project-based learning or inquiry-based learning because they do give you some um, benefits. Yeah? So number one is visual representation of the whole project. So mind maps uh, are fantastic for visual representation. They also show like concept maps that I mentioned before, connections between different ideas and branching out so children can see that let's say what we know about insects is that they are they live in the garden and then we can start uh, asking questions who else lives in the garden and then we can find out that spiders live in the garden uh, and then we can ask are they connected are they the same or different and this way you will see connections between different pieces of information so it also branches out from one central idea, as you can see, um, and you will see in some other examples. And this is actually, according to Tony Buzan and many other researchers of mind mapping, reflects the um, 
structure of our neurons so and how they connect so that's really natural so in other words it is uh, non let it's non-linear thinking uh, and it's uh, thinking through associations through branching out so very very good way to think so that's why mind maps are used for brainstorming because generating ideas is easier when you start with one central idea and then branch out using colors colors and pictures so this way uh, children can uh, explore different perspectives for example one child might look at pizza in one way while the other child might think of pizza in a different way same about insects or animals you are focusing on uh, organization so i find mind maps really great in terms of structuring my um, thoughts um, i might have uh, attention deficit disorder and it's easier for me to organize information this way i use mind maps as a teacher for all my planning all my brainstorming even of my personal life so of course i use it with children a lot and this does help to organize um, information better at this level preschool age children but even elementary school children will benefit from it and all the uh, children too uh, flexibility mind map can branch out uh, pretty much non-stop yes so and can be also easily edited modified so you can add information to it you can remove especially if you're using computer tools i prefer textures and paper but you can also use um, computer for computer-based maps i use special programs such as i mind map uh, or um, i use my whiteboard and special microsoft pen yeah that i'm using like this uh, personalization so mind maps allow learners um, to personalize the inquiry process explore topics that are of their interest and that's how it is a student-centered learning so children would love to learn about dinosaurs um, our bodies and uh, bu bugs and other creepy crawlers so similar topics that are of interest uh, finally it is active learning i already mentioned it so mind maps uh, allow children to be actively involved in uh, creating ideas testing ideas displaying information so in other words they are co-constructors of learning so if you think about um uh, how can i use mind maps uh, to even generate questions to ask children about this particular topic of interest so let's say bugs or insects uh, you can also use mind map for this stage this is what i start any of my projects with so you can call it webbing because it's not really branching out much uh, but it's just the beginning so you can uh, add more questions you can add experiences to this mind map so that's just an initial concept mind map that uh, you can start uh, with basic questions that you might ask children during your initial discussion for example you might question uh, what is the life uh, cycle of the insect how are they born how do they grow yeah um, you also can ask a question what do you know about insects who are insects uh, you can ask about where do they live uh, why should we protect them are they scary are they important and many many similar questions children uh, may add some interesting questions to your map but at this stage you are just developing your uh, map you can do it together as a team with another teacher and you can ask uh, do they sleep uh, what do they eat how do they move you also can ask uh, what types of insects are there and um, continue and keep going because there are many many questions to be asked now with a very simple example i will illustrate you the difference between a uh, mind map and just writing children's thoughts so as you can see we were talking about pizza with children and i did say that we talked about making pizza we discussed what pizza is made of so carter said it's made of water breeze tomato claire cheese eliana flour we found out that pizza is made of dough pretty much the same as play-doh and to make pizza base we need flour water salt and yeast nobody knew what yeast was so i showed them a picture of the yeast 
Um, and then we talked about sauce we want on our pizza. So Lachlan said that he wants to have a tomato sauce, BBQ sauce um, on top. We call it topping. We are going to put chicken, salami or ham. So that's an example of how you will document. So you see the problem here is that uh, parents might be busy reading this observation. It's not really visual. And if you honestly look at this uh, slide, you can see that your attention is more drawn towards a picture of pizza than the actual observation itself. So very, very important to organize information in a visual way for parents as well. Now let's look at the same information, but that is organized like a mind map. So what is on top of pizza? We have barbecue sauce, we have tomato sauce, chicken, salami, and ham. This mind map could be improved if I would add pictures of tomato sauce, barbecue sauce, salami, and ham chicken. And it could also branch out and out and out. It is very important to use only one idea per branch. For example, salami and ham is kind of the same answer. Chicken, yeah, tomato sauce, BBQ sauce. You can reorganize it in a different way. For example, sauce would be on the one branch and then it will go barbecue, tomato and white sauce and whatever other sauces we might use. And on the right side, you would go toppings and different types of toppings, right? So, but the idea is that you use different colors for each idea and different branches. So this is an example of what children may say about the topic of their interest. So as you can see in this group of children, um, there was a strong interest in wiggly worms. So, and I set up a worm farm. So, and we explored how do they live? What do they do? We observed the worms. And after we did what um, you can see on the picture, um, we uh, had a discussion and I was using mind mapping to document children's initial ideas or prior knowledge about worms. So as you can see here, some of our children said that they are long, they wiggle, they are red, and I don't want to touch them. So this is a um, very, very authentic type of documentation. You can attach it to your project. And then as they learn more about worms, you can have these discussions over and over to review uh, what they have learned about worms and this helps to grasp the conceptual understanding and see if there are any gaps you identified or misconceptions and review them and revisit this uh, information with uh, further experiences, discussions, books uh, and um, offerings. So how to draw your first mind map that will be capturing children's ideas uh, or prepare questions for children uh, and uh, your first discussion with children. So first you need to identify the topic or question. Remember that you need to identify the topic children want to explore. If you are using intentionality or intentional teaching, then it will be a concept that you want to introduce to children, but make sure that the concept is not too abstract, not too broad, so it should be age appropriate. For example, if you want to introduce the topic of sustainability, it might be a little bit too abstract, but water and what's happening with water, how we keep water clean, might be an appropriate way to start your inquiry. Step two, uh, the um, central idea so you put this central idea in the middle of the page this is very important in the middle of a blank big poster page or if you're using computer and smart board in the middle of uh, the uh, smart board or your computer um, open document uh, you might use digital mind mapping tool so and in this case it will be easier to type uh, and print and then also send to parents but as i was saying i prefer hand um, drawn mind maps so it's up to you once you decided that your topic is going to be let's say worms yeah you start branching out and start brainstorming different ideas subtopics related to the central idea so, for example, who are worms? Uh, what are they in terms of uh, what animal kingdom do they belong to? Are they similar to us? Do they have legs? What do they eat? Etc. Uh, you might also start uh, thinking about uh, are they safe? 
for children to explore uh, how can we be gentle, etc., etc. So these ideas, uh, we add to those branches that you connect it to the central idea. Remember that it should be one idea per branch. And if you are branching out, you also should follow the same rule. Uh, one idea per branch, even little branch. Yes. Uh, why it's important, think about it as a tree. Yes, so and the structure of mind map and the way it is is perfectly organized to reflect our brain structure and how we think. Okay, so you can ask questions as I was saying. So you don't need to write down facts about um, the concept. You can, uh, you can um, add questions and then ask those questions and write down what children responded on a different mind map. You also can explore each of subtopics and follow up with new ideas. You can make connections between branches by drawing those connections with a line or a wave. So people use different types of uh, connectors. Uh, you uh, finish your mind map once you um, believe that uh, at this stage this is what your understanding is and that's, that's where you're at. Uh, you also might look at the completed mind map and reflect on it. So maybe there is something that uh, children want to add. You can read it to children and especially if they are pictures, they will help you to read as well and interpret this mind map. So this will be a visual representation of the project. It also will be your documentation of the completed inquiry-based project. You can add reflection uh, in terms of which areas would you like to focus more if children still have interest in bugs, worms or whatever the topic was. And you can deepen uh, their understanding with excursions, incursions, uh, maybe getting a microscope or other tools like computers and um, inviting people to speak. Uh, with children, maybe inviting parent volunteers, uh, reading more books or uh, finding more props like life cycle of worms. Um, and I'll give you an example. With children, I learned so much about worms. I didn't know um, a lot about worms. For me, worms were always for fishing or creatures in the garden that I saw. And uh, as a child from the uh, 80s, <laughs> I was not always gentle to worms. So it really raised my awareness of uh, posthumanism and views on animals as creatures that have um, um, rights, yes, yeah, so animal rights. And when we, let's say, cut them in half, it might hurt. So we raised a lot of interesting ethical questions with children. We also learned that worms uh, are really, really good for the soil and they are amazing for soil, especially red Californian worms that you can buy in Bunnings and uh, have in a worm farm. We also discovered that sometimes worms uh, go to where the soil is enriched with our um, scraps from food and they really like vegetables. They do not like meat. They don't like lemons, but they will eat apples. <laughs> so as you can see, the knowledge is quite interesting and uh, definitely at the level of children who are three to five years old. We also discovered that worms have five hearts and this started a new project that um, I think was very interesting uh, segue or continuation on doctors and our body because we were very curious about how five hearts work and where is our heart and when I ask children where is your heart and how many hearts do you think we have uh, all of them were showing that their heart is somewhere where the stomach is, <laughs> which is an interesting concept. So we discussed uh, um, this during our next inquiry. So as you can see, it's an amazing tool. I hope you enjoyed this video cast. If you want to learn more about mind mapping, uh, consider subscribing and follow me on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok and other social media. Bye for now.